Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Lambrecht and I'm a third year medical student at Ohio University Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine and a Capello Fellow for Doctors for America this year. Today we're going to talk about um, what medical students, residents, and physicians can do to help make um, addiction medicine and our daily practice for patients with substance use disorder more inclusive. And today I'm joined by Dr. Aksa Malik, a fellow in child psychiatry, who's going to talk about her experience um, just in the hospital with addiction medicine, addiction psychiatry, and everything in between. So do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Of course, thank you so much, Alyssa. My name is um, Aksa Malik. Um, I did my residency from Einstein Medical Center, Philadelphia, and I matched at Jefferson for my child fellowship. I'm about to graduate in two months, um, and I'm going to start my addiction psychiatry fellowship in July. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. So one of the questions that kind of prompted me to want to have this discussion focusing on medical students and residents um, was one of my experiences during my internal medicine rotation. We had a patient who had a substance use disorder and was in a lot of pain um, and had a lot of complaints every time the team would go into the room. And just the frustration that the physicians were feeling, I felt like was very evident to me as a student, to the patient, and the pain of the patient just seemed to be um, put off more just because of their history. And I felt like they weren't treated um, as any other person would have been treated. They were treated with less respect and less pain control. And I felt like as a student, I wasn't sure how I could bring up that question to the resident, um, if I was able to speak up or how I could voice my concerns about the treatment of that patient. And so I'm wondering if you've ever had any positive or negative experiences that pushed you to be more interested in addiction medicine um, or times when you felt like you did speak up or could have spoken up when a situation like this happened. Uh, it's a really good question. So Lisa, luckily, because I am a psychiatrist, so during my residency, um, you know, we get co consulted um, from the medical unit, ob surgical unit, um, and usually the primary team has a question for us. Um, and our program was very um, supportive of substance abuse treatment. So, and I think that comes from just being in the field of psychiatry. So but within my residents and coworkers and attendings, we would always address that. But uh, what you felt as a medical student or a resident from another specialty, it totally makes sense. I have seen it. I've, I have colleagues in other specialties who have come up to me is like, we don't like talking about substance. We're not comfortable. We don't even know how to say it. And patients, because they're there for a complex medical reason or or you know they're in an accident or they have a broken bone and they're not they're they don't want to talk about that or they feel judged or they feel angry about that so and my simple answer to that is like just have a listening ear and use positive language and um and this is something that I just live by. If I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to go and ask somebody or I'm going to find the answer to that. So, um, you know, if the patient isn't ready to talk about it, you can always say like, hey, we have these services. We're here for support. Let us know if you want to talk about it. Um, you know, psychiatry and substance use is big on motivational interviewing. So patient has to be on board with that. Um, so luckily in my residency, we've had positive experiences, my attendings, and we're very supportive of that. And I think that kind of spilled it over into my fellowship where I'm like, okay, I like addictions, but maybe not enough. I want to pursue a child fellowship. But when I started my fellowship, I, I, I was seeing more and more adolescents with substance abuse problems than I would I would care to admit, um, maybe not full-blown um, disorders, but like, you know, problematic abuse, um, and then very limited or poor insight into their behaviors and, and, you know, the possibility of that becoming a disorder. Um, and that's where I feel that, you know, with adolescents, because there are so many psychosocial factors that come into stabilizing them and sending them back home. So substance use is kind of like down the line. We want to make sure they're not suicidal, not homicidal, they're not psychotic, um, they're safe in their home, so that that conversation kind of gets pushed at the bottom of the list, especially in an, in an emergency situation. Inpatient is a little different, but I was... I wasn't happy with the amount of skills that I have in myself to help my patients. And I think that's what drove me to figure out what, what else can I do to be a better psychiatrist for my adolescent patient population. And that's where the, the, the love for addiction psychiatry came along. And luckily I matched into Jefferson where I'm doing this fellowship as well. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difference between addiction medicine and addi addiction psychiatry and a little bit more about what you hope to do with like the adolescent population with your training? So addiction medicine and addiction psychiatry, they have a lot of overlap when it comes to their training. Um, the difference is like if for addiction psychiatry fellowship, you have to have a residency in psychiatry. Um, you have to be a psychiatrist to do that. Um, and the and the education or the training involves a lot of like psychiatric background. Um, and you look at the patient from a psychiatric viewpoint. Uh, on the other hand, addiction medicine, you can go and do that from any specialty, like you can do internal medicine and do that. I am family medicine, ob even surgical specialty, you can do addiction medicine. And it, that is more focused on the medical treatment, like detox and treating treatment of medical complications. But like I said, there's a lot of overlap because you cannot treat one thing and not the other. So medical and psych kind of go hand in hand, but that's the main difference. Um, remind me, what was your other question? Oh, what I, I remember it. What I hope to do with my training. So like I said, um, in our fellowship, I mean, we do have a rotation um, where we're learning about substance abuse on an outpatient basis and how to treat that. But I feel like because I'm seeing more and more problematic use and less and less insight and less and less worry that I would that I would want to see. Um, and also the behavioral addictions like internet gaming, shopping, or like social media. Um, and I think that we do not talk about that enough. Um, so getting trained in addiction psychiatry would allow me to have that skill set to get comfortable um, with talking about addiction and treating that. Um, and I'm hoping that with my background in child psychiatry and my training in um, addiction psychiatry, then I can use that skill set to help my adolescent patient population because although it's a disease of adults, it kind of starts in adolescent years and then I can follow them throughout their lifespan. You know, being an adult and a child and an addiction psychiatrist, it would allow me to have like a long-term relationship with my patients. So I think that's kind of like the, the thing that really attracts me. It's like I can help them with, with everything. And we know that addiction, uh, in, especially in adolescent, is usually as a result of trauma or they're self-medicating. So having that background of being a child psychiatrist, I can treat their underlying comorbidities and support them in their substance abuse healing. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And especially like you said, it being a small field, something that not a lot of people are studying yet. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of ways that will make a big difference in a lot of patients' lives. My goal is to inspire more, more child psychiatrists to get more formally trained in addiction because that's the age where you want to, you know, you can actually change the course of somebody's life. It's like one less adult in a rehab center if I can do that intervention in that age, age group. So, yeah. And I think you've mentioned it or touched on it. So um, pediatricians, OB, like you're going to be seeing substance use in every field, um, no matter what your specialty. Do you have any advice for um, physicians, residents who want to learn a little bit more about um, just like about addiction medicine and addiction psych because it's going to impact them in some way in their field? Right. So I think that, and I, I know we were discussing that earlier on, like one of the things that I've noticed while students and interns are uncomfortable talking about is we can, we need to have more didactics about substance use. I feel like we, um, we discuss everything, but the substance use is like one lecture. And I think it needs to be more. So um, people are comfortable with the language and uh, it should be, you know, the environment should be more forgiving. If somebody doesn't know how to speak and I, we should all educate each other. It's not, it's not easy. It's complicated. Uh, a lot of dynamics goes into it. When you're seeing a patient on a surgical floor or a medical floor uh, with an open wound, but you're focusing on that, just addiction aspect, it's very natural for a patient to feel judged. So I think just like open communication with the team, everybody being on the same page, um, you know, it's, it's not going to help the patient if one person is talking about one thing and the other person is like, substance abuse, substance abuse, you're an addict. Um, so everybody needs to be on the same page. And I think educating the medical students with more lectures and like something that like you are doing, like you're really into advocacy, I think that will uh, bring an overall global change in how we look at substance abuse, not just, you know, oh, this person is an addict. That's a, you know, addiction is a disease and it should be looked at like that. 
Great. And then one last question. Have you had any conversations with your peers um, about maybe how they've spoken about a patient or just kind of helping educate them on the right terminology, like you've mentioned before? Um, and do you have any like tips for students that might want to help educate some of the preceptors where this language might be a newer concept and just how to do that in a respectful way? Right. I think um, what I've always done is then I have much to learn. I don't know everything, but if I feel like somebody's being disrespectful, if I don't anything, I just go and ask as a question. It's like, hey, I was wondering, what do you think is a good way to address something? This is something that I find challenging. Um, another aspect that that applies to me is like English isn't my first language. So I'm always checking to make sure that I'm using the right terminology. So it's kind of like, it's easy for me. I mean, I don't mind asking questions. I don't think like I know everything. So, um, and I would say that to the medical students and when I am working and I do work with medical students a lot, I give lectures, I work, you know, um, I work with residents as well. So I try my best to make sure everybody feels comfortable asking questions about it. And if I feel like people are, you know, making faces or they are, feeling a certain way, I'll just open up the conversation is like, hey, does anybody have a question about that? So, you know, I've always like learned by just asking a question because then an attending or a person in a senior position won't feel like we are judging them or they are, we're putting them on the spot. And if you ask it as a question, I think they would, most attendings love to teach. Um, and I'd understand if they are, they are dealing with 10 different things, you know, sometimes their language is not the most appropriate, but just reminding each other's um, is another way to do it. I feel at the end of the day, we all want our patients to do well. We are all in the medical field uh, because we want to care for our patients. So I feel like sometimes it's not intentional when people are negative about that, but then, you know, more didactics, more education and more environment where people can ask questions freely. That would help. Yeah, thank you. That is really good advice. And I feel like things I've heard before were kind of all put together about how to help our, because that whole goal is to help our patients. So even if it's a little uncomfortable for you to bring up the conversation, it's going to help everyone in the long run. Um, do you have any other tips or anything else you want to talk about um, before we head out? Yeah, well, I would say go into psychiatry, <laughs> go into addiction psychiatry, I think we need a lot more child psychiatrists in the country. We don't have enough and certainly not enough child psychiatrists who are also trained in addiction psychiatry. And I feel like it's the need of the hour, especially post pandemic. There have been such a rise in behavioral addiction. We don't even get to that conversation. Even when we're talking about addictions, we talk about substances and all, but I feel, I see a lot of behavioral addiction coming out. And, and I think it's important that everybody's on the same page and everybody realizes how important this is. And, and speaking for myself, I do feel comfortable getting a formal education in that, but I think that my peers who are not getting training in and like an addiction I think they are also pretty awesome. You want to educate yourself, you know, you learn from each other. So that's not the only way to go, but I would still like encourage people like, you know, get, get into addiction psychiatry, especially for child psychiatrists. I think that's a much needed field and a unique skill set. Yeah. So thank you again. I think like everything in medicine, there's not enough focus on prevention and early detection. So I think, you know, going into adolescent psych with the addiction mindset is an amazing field and very exciting for you. Um, well, so thank many you. Go with that outpatient, inpatient rehab. So the opportunities are limitless. You know, if you like yeah. to think about the, oh, what I'm going to do with this training, there is so much that you could do. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll include some links for further education and resources with the video. Thank you. You're very welcome, Alyssa. Thank you so much.